In the previous video, we learned about client-side rendering in React. We also learned the drawbacks of client-side rendering, which include two key challenges. First, its reliance on JavaScript for rendering content on the client side can significantly hurt SEO as search engines might struggle to index the content properly. Second, the user experience can suffer from slow load times as the browser has to download, parse, and execute JavaScript before the user sees any meaningful content on the page. To overcome these drawbacks of client-side rendering, modern React frameworks like Gatsby and Next.js pivoted towards server-side solutions. This approach fundamentally changes how content is delivered to the user. When a request comes in, instead of sending a nearly empty HTML file that depends on client-side JavaScript to construct the page, the server takes charge of rendering the full HTML. This fully formed HTML document is then sent directly to the browser. Since the HTML is generated on the server, the browser is able to quickly parse and display it, improving the initial page load time. The server-side approach effectively resolves the issues associated with client-side rendering. First, it significantly improves SEO because search engines can easily index the server-rendered content. Second, users can immediately see the page HTML content instead of a blank screen or loading spinner. However, SSR's approach to immediately improving the visibility of content has its own complexity, particularly when it comes to the page's interactivity. The full interactivity of the page is on hold until the JavaScript bundle comprising React itself along with your application-specific code has been completely downloaded and executed by the browser. This important phase, known as hydration, is where the static HTML page, initially served by the server, is brought to life. During hydration, React takes control in the browser, reconstructing the component tree in memory based on the static HTML that was served. It carefully plans the placement of interactive elements within this tree. Then, React proceeds to bind the necessary JavaScript logic to these elements. This involves initializing the application state, attaching event handlers for actions such as clicks and mouseovers, and setting up any other dynamic functionalities required for a fully interactive user experience. Hydration is an essential concept as we move forward, so please make sure you're comfortable with what we have just learned. Diving deeper, Server-side solutions can be categorized into two strategies, static site generation, or SSG, and server-side rendering, or SSR. SSG occurs at build time, when the application is deployed on the server. This results in pages that are already rendered and ready to serve. It is ideal for content that doesn't change often, like blog posts. SSR, on the other hand, renders pages on demand in response to user requests. It is suitable for personalized content like social media feeds, where the HTML depends on the logged in user. Usually, you'll see the two collectively being referred to as just server-side rendering or SSR. Server-side rendering was a significant improvement over client-side rendering, providing faster initial page loads and better SEO. However, SSR introduced its own set of challenges. One issue with SSR is that components cannot start rendering and then pause or wait while the data is still being loaded. If a component needs to fetch data from a database or another source like an API, this fetching must be completed before the server can begin rendering the page. This can delay the server's response time to the browser as the server must finish collecting all necessary data before any part of the page can be sent to the client. A second issue with SSR is that for successful hydration, where React adds interactivity to the server-rendered HTML, the component tree in the browser must exactly match the server-generated component tree. This means that all the JavaScript for the components must be loaded on the client before you can start hydrating any of them. The third issue with SSR is related to hydration itself. 
React hydrates the component tree in a single pass, meaning once it starts hydrating, it won't stop until it is finished with the entire tree. As a consequence, all components must be hydrated before you can interact with any of them. These three problems of having to load the data for the entire page, load the JavaScript for the entire page, and hydrate the entire page create an all or nothing waterfall problem that spans from the server to the client where each issue must be resolved before moving on to the next one. This is inefficient if some parts of your application are slower than others, as is often the case in real-world applications. Because of these limitations, the React team introduced a new and improved SSR architecture. Join me in the next video where we will explore that architecture and understand how it addresses the limitations of traditional SSR. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.